there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. You know, when we listen to someone speaking, or when we read someone's words, we tend to receive thoughts in clumps of information we call paragraphs. And unless you're a fictional character in a feature motion picture, it usually takes more than one sentence to get an idea across. So paragraphs might just be the basic unit of storytelling. Composers understand this too, and they create sections or paragraphs, if you will, of musical ideas that are related. As we learn to listen to music, we begin to take in larger blocks of information, just as we learn to do as children, listening to our parents and older siblings speaking. Ready for an opportunity to listen for the larger sections of a piece of music? I'll play a short composition by Thelonious Monk entitled, Ruby, My Dear. Then I'll go back and play one section or paragraph at a time. Here it is, all the way through. If we were to assign each paragraph or section of the music a letter of the alphabet, the first section will arbitrarily be named the A section. Remember, if anything repeats, it receives the same letter designation. So for instance, if the first section occurred one time and then the composer went to something new, something different, we'd have A, B so far. If the second section repeated, we'd now have A, B, B so far. If the first section then returned, we'd have A, B, B, A as the description of the sections or paragraphs. You get it, I'm sure. Ruby, my dear, has just four paragraphs in the rendition I'm playing. Pausing at the end of each section, I'll let you know when each section ends and the next one begins. Your job? Assign a letter of the alphabet for each section. Does everybody understand the assignment? Yeah. 
end of first section. Here's the second. End of second section. Here's the third. End of third section. Here's the fourth section or paragraph. End of fourth section. So what did you come up with as you were listening for musical paragraphs or sections? This was the first. A. Whew. Well, we already knew that. Let's see what came next. The second section is a repeat of A. So up to this point, we have A, A. Next, we got something different. It's even in what we call a different key. That's the way B starts. Now, the next large section started like this. And so, the large sections or paragraphs are A, A, B, A. Now, listen to the Dan Creasy Quartet perform Ruby My Dear and notice the paragraphs or sections as they play them. Not too tough to hear those musical paragraphs, was it? Here's another one for you. This is a movement from a group of piano pieces by Robert Schumann called Kinderzenen, or Scenes from Childhood.
Now, we'll break this down into sections, and I'll stop at the end of each one. Before going on, once again, you assign a letter of the alphabet to each section. End of first section. Now, here's the second section. End of second section. Here's the third section. End of third section. Here's the fourth and final section or paragraph. End of fourth section. How did we do on this one? A, the first section, started like this. And the second section, B, started like this. And the third section, started like this. So far, we have A, B, B. And the fourth section, started like this. So, we have a return to A, making the list of sections A, B, B, A. Another aspect of the music I just played for you is the fact that we call it program music. Program music as opposed to what? Program music as opposed to abstract music, musical compositions that have a topic or special scene or idea they are attempting to portray. And I bet you know some of the most famous examples of program music. Vivaldi's The Four Seasons, Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, even the titles tell us that the composer wants to paint a picture or tell a story. And it's not just instrumental works. Every piece of music that has words is program music. The words tell us what the program is. So, all songs, longer works of choral music such as Handel's Messiah, all operas, all ballet scores, they all have stories and are therefore programs. As opposed to all those wordless, abstract musical compositions with names like Symphony No. 1, Piano Sonata No. 14, String Quartet No. 22, all of these compositions convey feeling and thought for sure, but there's no story or program connected with the music. And most of the composers we know and love have written both program and abstract music. So, going back to Robert Schumann's Kinderszenen, meaning, as I said, scenes from childhood, think about this. Here we have a 28-year-old man remembering how he felt in various circumstances when he was just a little boy and translating each of those feeling states into individual pieces of wordless music with titles such as Happy Enough, A Child Falls Asleep, Daydreaming, and A Night on His Hobby Horse. So here's an interesting little test. I'm going to play the movement with its sections A, B, B, A again. What feeling or scene does this music suggest to you?
What do you think? Did words like pompous, pretentious, regal come to mind? These are some of the descriptions people have given us when we presented this course in the past. And what is the title Schumann gave to this short piece of music? Wichtige Begebenheit, in German or in English, important event. We don't know in any way just what important event Schumann had in mind, but maybe it was the day when he was eight years old that Prince von Furschenschnorzen came to town with his magnificent horse-drawn carriage and his footmen and other servants and all of his fancy clothing. But whatever it was, we can agree that he succeeded in transmitting the feeling that he was witnessing an important event. Program music. When I was demonstrating contrapuntal texture, I played this composition that contains three separate independent melodies. This is a piece of abstract music. When Bach wrote it, he gave it a generic title, Prelude in D Major, just one of a group of compositions he called 12 Little Preludes for Beginners. These 12 preludes were probably written as exercises for his harpsichord students so they would become proficient in playing contrapuntal texture. It definitely projects a mood, it's in a major key, and it's in a moderately moving tempo. So, we know that he wanted to project a feeling that was somewhat on this side of the optimistic feeling scale. Had he so desired, he could have easily written this prelude in D minor with instructions to play it at a slower speed. Projecting a completely different mood and feeling. But he gave us this. there's no story. He didn't write some verbal description on the top of the music saying, This is about my little dachshund, Fritzi, who licks my toes as I play my harpsichord every morning. No, he didn't write any such thing. And this highlights one of the truly amazing things about abstract music. Composers can transmit so much feeling in a piece of music with no words. For many people on the planet, the only kind of music there is, is song. I mean, if a piece of music has no words, how could it be any good? There can definitely be value to music that has no words because there's um, a lot of the message that comes through in the music itself. For the most part, I do listen to music um, with lyrics. Is it any good if it doesn't have words? Of course, it, it touches your soul when it doesn't have words. When I listen to music with words, I'm paying more attention to the words and to the lyrics. But when I listen to music without words, I get more involved in the music. Music is very worthwhile without words. I tend to lean more towards songs about something that I can understand through the lyrics. I love jazz and I love classical music. And when I'm really listening to it, you know, I, I want to hear the music and the instrumentation and the harmonies and the melodies more than the words. I prefer music with words because I prefer to sing along, even though I'm not a great singer. I feel like there's a lot of value with music that doesn't have words. Now, here's an opportunity to prove how open-minded you can be as you listen. This next composition contains a melody you know, but 
It's been hidden or disguised in the music by the composer. Your mission? Identify the familiar melody hidden in this music. Did you find it? <laughs> okay, here is the familiar melody. Aha! <laughs> yes, you knew it all along, right? Now we'll play the theme and Mozart's first variation of the twelve variations he wrote on A vous dirai je maman. I recite for you, mama, my ABCs, or as we know it, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, whether it's visual or oral, or virtually any other aspect of the human experience, our ability to perceive, in other words, our degree of openness and flexibility, will bring us some of life's greatest pleasures. So, be willing to listen to a piece of music many times. As open and flexible listeners, we'll get more and more out of our listening experiences. I'm George Mariner Mall for the Discovery Orchestra, reminding you to listen better.